We built the world's fastest disc launcher, and if we succeed at launching a disc over 150 miles per hour, we're gonna find out how far a disc can really fly. Even though I've been playing disc golf for over 15 years, I'm still terrible. So I knew the only way I'd ever break any records is by building a machine. And if high school taught me anything about how objects fly, it's that faster means further. We previously built this disc launcher as a prototype, and it can throw an incredible 125 miles per hour. The only problem is that it can't even throw regulation discs. It makes for a cool tomato slicer, but we wanted to test the limits of how far a regulation disc can fly. Our goal was to break the distance world record held by David Wiggins Jr., but it ended up being much more difficult than expected, and it took us over 500 hours to complete. The forces involved are 10 times larger than our mini disc launcher, which makes this machine at least 10 times more dangerous. Disc golf is played just like regular golf, but instead of hitting a ball into a hole, you throw a frisbee off a tee and into a basket in as few throws as possible. But mostly the goal is to avoid throwing the disc into a tree. So the plan is to build a machine that can throw a disc at least 150 miles per hour. That's 60 miles per hour faster than a human has ever thrown, so it should easily break the distance world record. But after some early misguided design attempts, I had to enlist the help of my cousin. And after a couple weeks of hard work, he sent over an initial sketch. So it looks like we're going with a similar design to our last video. With this design, we'll use a powerful motor and attach a metal arm to it. The disc will be held at the end of the arm by a mechanical hand, and will spin the whole assembly as fast as the motor can handle. At the perfect moment, a release mechanism will let go of the disc when it's moving at its target velocity. Because the outside edge of the disc is always moving faster than the inside edge, when you let go, the disc already has spin. And there's no math needed here. It turns out the disc RPM will always equal the arm RPM. According to TechDisc, the RPM to velocity relationship for a top professional looks something like this. We're gonna try to match top pro Ganon Burr's data. TechDisc was kind enough to send us one, and these discs are perfect for comparing your arm speed, spin, and a bunch of other metrics with your friends. But we also thought it would be cool for testing out our machine. Oh, my wall. It looks like Troy's making really good progress on the design. And we're excited to test out this 10,000 watt motor we just received. Our estimates were that we needed about a three horsepower motor to break the world record. So like any good engineer, we took that number, quadrupled it, and called it a day. First, we soldered some connectors, attached a speed controller, and put a 10 pound steel block in the shaft. Then it was time to power up this motor for the first time. Scared. Yeah, there's no way that's not enough power. The only problem with spinning things really fast in a circle is this thing called centripetal force. It's the same force that pushes water out of your clothes during a spin cycle, or that throws kids off this banned playground ride. But it's just a simple calculation. Force equals mass times velocity squared over radius. And for 200 miles per hour, we get 1,500 pounds? At these speeds, the arm will basically need to be strong enough to hang a small car from it. We're definitely going to have to make this thing beefy. If it's not strong enough, we're going to have shrapnel flying off in all different directions. Ah! We're designing the hand to throw any type of disc, from a blunt putter to a sharp driver. As you can see, my shop's still a complete disaster. But I just bought a new building over in the metaverse, so let's just head over there. To hold the disc, these V-shaped pieces will be mounted to the sides of the assembly and spring-loaded to accept all different sizes. We'll lock the disc in place with this piece, which simulates fingers, and will rotate downwards to release the disc. This is a critical assembly on this machine, so we're scrapping together this 3D printed prototype to see if it works. The final build will be 100% aluminum and steel. Since this mechanism seems really promising for a first try, we're going to start machining these parts. But even though things were looking great, it wouldn't be long before we would run into some serious issues. Oh, I forgot one other thing. Just to make this project even more difficult, we're designing it to throw with any pitch angle or any roll angle. The pros throw at all different angles, and we want this machine to be at least as good as the pros. 
In our last project, we used a pile of garbage to control the angle, but we're gonna try something a little more sophisticated this time. The base of the machine will look something like this, and we'll put a linear actuator here that will lift the front end of the machine up and down. This will let us throw the disc high in the air or low to the ground. And this second linear actuator will control the roll angle of the disc by moving this entire plate and everything on it. So for linear motion, we're using these Acme screws which are much cheaper than ball screws and can hold a position without power. They're the same screws used in most machining equipment. We're gonna mill out some extruded aluminum and mount the screw inside. This stuff is great for any one-off prototyping or machine building. Let's just make sure we have everything and we can get this thing built. I thought this firing pin guide would only take a few minutes, but somehow I managed to scrap it five times. And for the sake of time, here's 10 hours of assembly in just 15 seconds. And this is where I almost broke my hand. Then I realized we needed to press these bearings into the plate, but our press was way too small. Good thing hammers can fix anything. So it's been about a month since our first napkin sketch, and we're excited to finally launch a disc. The pieces that hold the disc are supposed to be metal, but they don't fit. Luckily we have the old plastic prototype lying around, so we'll see if they can handle a low speed launch. It's good. Mm -hmm. Baby, we got a launch. Well, the good news is that we're still alive and the disc launched in the correct direction. The bad news is there's a whole bunch of minor issues that need to be fixed before our next test. I'm not gonna bore you with all of them, but the main issue is that the firing pin is jamming. This really needs to work for the machine to throw repeatedly. So we're 3D printing and machining some new parts and we'll try again. We reassembled the servo mechanism that ejects the pin and fixed all the other issues. We should be ready for another test. We're gonna try a slightly higher launch speed than last time, and we're hoping that big roll of roofing material will keep the machine stable. Oh no, this is really not good. The machine is 70 pounds and it had 50 pounds of roofing material sitting on it but it still easily dances around after launching the disc. If we throttle up to 100% power, the entire machine will probably just fall apart. In the last video, we were able to ignore this because the machine weighed so much more than the disc. We could just strap this thing to a pallet or stake it to the ground, but we have some more elegant ideas in mind on how to fix this for good. We could hold a weight near the middle of the arm that slides into position to rebalance everything when the disc is released, but we're gonna try our best to avoid that. Since it requires less rework, we're gonna try to rebalance the existing arm by swinging a counterweight out of the existing hub. The counterweight system will also use the same trigger pin that launches the disc. We'll also need a new static counterweight to adjust for all the changes we made in weight distribution. Every time we change weight anywhere in the system, it needs to be counterbalanced on the other side. We just burned 30 hours making this ridiculous contraption, so we're really hoping it'll work. If all goes well, the counterweight will release and the machine will stay in place. Oh yeah, the balance looks great. It barely shifted after the launch compared to last time. Unfortunately, my cousin let me know that this is just a prototype and the counterweights will completely snap off at full power, so we're gonna have to beef this thing way up. Between the last two iterations, we spent a ton of time strengthening the hub, adding clearances so the counterweight can swing further, and a bunch of other stuff. We had to unbend this counterweight arm, and we scrapped a bunch of hub attempts. We just finished up the hub installation, so it's time to spin this thing faster than it's ever gone before. Well, that didn't work. The counterweight failed to extend, so the machine is jumping around again. We quickly tried one more time to see if this was a one-off issue, and now we have shrapnel flying off our machine. The counterweight just can't handle all the forces involved. This component that we just spent so much time on is now scrap metal. But we wanted to do one more test with this assembly. Spin up the machine to full power for the first time.
So the centripetal forces put torque on the arm so strong that it bent upward. That's really scary. Plus, by pringling this arm, we just created another huge piece of scrap metal. At this point, we could just brute force going for the record with our current design and let the machine buck around after every throw. But we're more civilized than that. So we'll just design a completely new arm and counterweight system from scratch. They haven't let me sleep for three days. So we're scrapping the swinging arm counterweight and going with a sliding weight design. The center of gravity of these weights will sit almost in the middle and when the disc releases, the weights will unlatch and the centripetal force will pull the weights out until they hit a hard stop. We were planning on bringing the machine to the field the next day, so I wanted to do one last test to make sure the sliding weights were working properly. I pretended not to see these messages from Troy and powered it right up. This is insane. The centripetal force on the outside counterweights pulled the steel linear shafts outward and bent them. I just did the math and the force was 1400 pounds on each weight. So we spent the next few days rebuilding anything that broke and we added a cross beam to keep the shafts from bending outward. And we completely rebuilt both of these trigger pin assemblies so they're super jam proof. After seeing how dangerous this machine was getting, we decided this was a good time to add a safety shield. The cardboard box protected us well in the last video, but these forces are legitimately dangerous. After that, we just had a few hours of electrical and software upgrades to make, and we were ready to go for the record. Let me remind you that in 2016, David Wiggins Jr. threw a disc in a 40 plus mile per hour wind over 1100 feet. That is insane. So we packed up the machine, drove to the biggest field we could find, and started setting up. After sending up the drones, it was time for the first ever field test. Three, two, one. <laughs> this was a great result. All the machine components worked perfectly and the disc went right where we aimed it. So it was time to ramp up the speed and see what this thing could really do. It was amazing to see the disc launch at such a high speed, but we didn't get anywhere near the distance record. So we kept launching and launching and launching, but the discs were only going seven or 800 feet. But then we had an idea. The wind was blowing in a much more favorable direction across the street. So we packed everything up and then set up the machine over there and our confidence was at an all-time high after integrating this newly forged log technology that allowed us to launch at an even more extreme angle. So we loaded in our furthest flying disc and set the machine to full power. After hours of failed attempts, when the disc came right back at us, we all knew it was time to quit for the day. Our discs just could not handle the launch speeds. But luckily our friends over at OTB and Infinite Discs were kind enough to send us the fastest, most roll-proof discs they could find. And one week later, we saw our chance. A favorable wind at the perfect location. We just carried this gear all the way up this hill. I hope this works. We brought all of our brand new discs and did our usual setup. Then we loaded up this super glidey high speed driver.
sound good. Go. Come out. Come out. Oh, my God. Go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where is it? We got it. Where is it? It's a scarfing. Where is it? Oh, my God. Where was it? With almost 20 seconds of hang time, we could tell that we easily crushed any records we had hoped to break that day. So we immediately ran out to measure the disc that had flown over a quarter of a mile away. And we could not believe the lasered measurement of 1,393 feet. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing so you can see what we do next. And if you're interested in chatting with us on our Discord, early content releases, or receiving bonus content, the absolute best way you can support our channel is by joining our Patreon community. And the last way you can support us is by purchasing a tech disc through the link in our description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.